spoilers alert, but I am damn sure that Thanos is going to beat all of the Avengers in the Infinity War. And I'm going to tell you why. What is up, YouTube? It's Josh. This is the Den of Nerds. Guys, the Infinity War hype is realer than it has ever been. Of course, we got the D23 trailer and the San Diego Comic-Con trailer. That footage kind of leaked online, so I got to look at that a little bit. Um, it's pretty much all of the Marvel fans have been talking about. They've been talking about Infinity War. Um, it was very interesting. I sat down with a bunch of different people before. Or San Diego and was kind of thinking, well, what are they going to do? I think they should kind of let this linger. I don't know how much they should show. They should probably put focus on Black Panther. They should probably put focus on Thor. But really, despite the Thor trailer really blowing me away, and I will cover that, um, I- I've really been only thinking about Infinity War in scope, um, in context, just all I can think about is an Infinity War. And in this video, I'm going to lay out for you guys why I am sure that Thanos is going to come down and beat the Avengers. I'm going to go through some things, and then at the very end of the video, I'm going to talk about the number one irrefutable piece of evidence that supports the fact that Thanos is going to beat all of the Avengers in the Infinity War uh, movie. And just to be real with you guys, I don't think audiences are going to be super ready for what they're going to see in this movie. Uh, and I'm going to kind of explain that as I go through it. But let's talk about the phase one, two, and three of the Marvel Cinematic Universe thus far. I think that your early phase one films were really designed to bring together the people within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. When you go back and watch those movies, it's really setting the stage for these characters. You're really learning them, you're, you're falling in love with them, and establishing this, this really connected world. Remember, originally this all happened in post credit scenes. There were small connect, pieces of connective tissue, but as far as like the big time uh, crossovers, that all took place using Nick Fury and using, um, the post credit scene. So essentially, the buildup in phase one, especially, was to Avengers. Duh. But when the Avengers initiative is put on the table and the Avengers all come together, they are fighting Loki, who has an army of Shatari and has basically an infinity stone. Now, that's one stone, guys. One stone and one thing that Thanos gave to Loki in order to have him fight against the Avengers. Um, and that's a crazy movie, obviously a very big deal, uh, a big problem for everyone. But right away from Avengers on, we get the Infinity Stones becoming a major part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the fabric that ties it all together. I mean, you get a Thanos post credit scene in Avengers uh, and to conquer Earth would be to court death, I believe is what the guy says to him. Um, and from there on out, the rest of the movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe have little hints and utilization of the Infinity Stones and hints at Thanos. I mean, the next good look we get at Thanos was in Guardians of the Galaxy 1, where, you know, you learn a little bit more about him. You see how he interacts with Ronan. Um, he really doesn't do much except float around in that chair, but the Power Gem, or the Power Stone, is a part of that movie, and the Infinity Stones and the Collector were, were world-building towards one of the greatest comic book stories ever told, and that would be Infinity Gauntlet. Now, Thanos Quest is an amazing story, okay? So, essentially... I think what we're going to get is a version of Thanos quest with Infinity War, and that would be uh, Thanos getting all of the gems. Now, here is one piece of evidence for why I think Thanos is going to kick all of the Avengers' asses. In Thanos quest... He fights these elders of the universe. He fights all these really powerful cosmic level beings and he beats them. He beats them without gems. He beats them using certain gems. He beats them when they use their gems. Guys, Thanos is whooping people that are probably on the power scaling level of in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, uh, Kurt Russell. You know, he's uh, a celestial essentially, right? And, and, I believe that the elders of the universe are on level with the uh, 
Celestials, and, and it's all kind of tricky because, you know, the cinematic universe is different than the comic books, but I'm saying that the source material indicates that Thanos, without any gems whatsoever, is on a power level that can literally beat these kind of powerful people. So he's going to come to Earth and do a version of Thanos' quest, and he's going to get all of the gems, similarly to the way he did in Thanos' quest, but except instead of beating Elders of the Universe... He's going to beat members of the Avengers. Um, this would be Vision. This would be um, Doctor Strange. This would be all the Avengers. But but essentially, the ones that have the gems, the the big heavy hitters that we have in the MCU right now, are going to be fought and crushed by Thanos just to mirror what happens in Thanos' quest. I mean, guys, they're not going to spend 10 years of filmmaking to set this up and have him not get all of the gems. How do you think he's going to do it? I think he's going to rip it out of Vision's head, leaving him for dead. I think he's going to crush Doctor Strange, taking away the time stone and, and leaving Doctor Strange completely confused and uh, having to deal with paradoxes and a ton of self-doubt. I think he's going to come to Earth and get all the gems and then get out. They describe this movie, the Russo brothers coming out of San Diego, as a heist movie. Thanos is going to come to Earth and it's a heist movie. It's going to be pretty freaking crazy. You're going to have armies all over the globe, mass destruction. I think the Black Order comes in as the first wave. And then Thanos arrives after the Avengers are already pretty beaten. And he's going to put the finishing touches on them, take the gauntlet, and then he's out. Because I don't think his interests lie on Earth at all. Um, I think his interests only lie on Earth insofar as he knows the Infinity Stones are there. He knows for some reason the Earthlings are able to use them or have some kind of knowledge about the Infinity Stones. Earth is important to the fabric of the universe in some way. But Thanos is really just concerned with getting that power, balancing the universe, which is something he says in the uh, the footage. If you look at the leaked footage, which I might put some stuff up here, but I think I might get flagged if I do, you see Thanos doing things visually that are almost undescribable. Doctor Strange was a toe in the pool compared to what we are going to get in Infinity War with Thanos utilizing his own power and the power of the Infinity Stones as he puts them together, okay? So we're going to get absolute craziness. You see Thanos kind of teleporting around like bloop, 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 stepping on air. And then, you know, obviously he throws that planet or moon at them. And it's going to be absolute craziness. But one of the things he says is that he never thinks about enjoyment when considering balancing the universe. So I think he and uh, Hela, who will be replacing Mistress Death in this storyline, I believe, will want to balance the universe. Right now, I think that what that means is if you look at like Hell and these other versions of the Nine Realms, these places where the people are dead or whatever. There are way more places in the universe where things are alive, realms where people live and flourish and thrive, than there are places where there's emptiness, cold space, death, ghosts, souls, whatever. And I think Thanos and Hela look to balance that. He is going to try to win the favor of Hela, and I really hope that she does give him the cold shoulder, Although it can't possibly be the same silent treatment that we had in the comics because that's just not going to work if it's Kate Blanchett. It's just kind of a waste. You're going to have something going on there, uh, and there will be a cinematic version of that. That's very, very interesting. Now, let me get to, without a doubt, the most compelling piece of evidence for the fact that the Avengers will lose and be crushed by Thanos. This would be Infinity War Part 2. Now, that title has changed, but the fact that it has changed is the evidence, okay? So this was originally going to be Infinity War Part 2. They were going to film these movies back to back in Pinewood, but they decided not to, and they decided to take a different angle on them, and now the film is only called Avengers 4. Also, they came out and said months ago that the title for Avengers 4 is a spoiler for Infinity War. And there was an actress on Infinity War who supposedly spoiled the title of Avengers 4 as Infinity Gauntlet. 
this goes back to what I was saying earlier. They're going to do a version of the Thanos quest with Infinity War. They're going to take old, great stories and blend them with more modern takes, and you're getting a lot of Hickman. Like, just straight up, guys, you're getting a lot of Hickman. And if you ever read Infinity, I think they're going to take elements of that story, uh, both the side where the Avengers are out with all their ships, the, the Kree and the Skrull, and with the Black Order and Thanos attacking Earth. So the fact that that movie is supposedly called Infinity Gauntlet, and that is a spoiler for Infinity War, means that there's going to be a war on Earth, a heist movie to get the gems, and then the second part of that movie is going to be the Avengers, probably with the Kree, probably with the Scroll, and all these other aliens formulating an armada, a great armada, and they're going to go out into space to where Thanos is at, probably on the Mistress Death Shrine, and he's going to fight them for all of reality's sake. Now, here's what's really fucking cool about this. You are getting to a place where this is just inconceivable. It's inconceivable. How could the heroes possibly beat Thanos in that situation? Well, you, that is exactly one of the principles of storytelling that Stan Lee popularized with Marvel Comics. The idea here, guys, is that if you cannot see a way for the heroes to succeed, that makes for the perfect story. And the fact that they will succeed and the way in which they do it is the interesting part of that story. So that's all I really wanted to do in this video. I've been thinking a lot about Infinity War. I'll probably do a ton of videos on it in the conceivable future, but I wanted to do this video and put some evidence forward on why I think Thanos will beat all of the Avengers in Infinity War. But what do you think? Do you agree with me? Have you heard anything from any news media sources that would contradict some of the things that I've said? Please, I'm always willing to learn, guys. I love talking with you guys about these things in the comments section. My hype level is through the roof for Infinity War. So please, uh, hit me up in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think that some of them are going to die? Do you think all of them are going to die? How do you think that's going to happen? Please, let me know in the comments section, guys. As always, please subscribe to this channel so that you can get all of my crazy, nerdy thoughts about these awesome things that are happening. Oh, and go check out thedenofnerds.com. We do podcasting on there. We write articles on there. Uh, and honestly, if you hit me up on either the website or here, and you have an idea for an article or you want us to cover something, we can probably do that. So please let us know the kind of stuff you want to read about, the videos you want to see. Uh, help us to help you to help the nerdy world. As I always say, I hope you are having an awesome and nerdy day. See ya!